it's me Nikki with Pin Cut Sew Studio. I'm back with another tutorial for you today. I wanted to make my aunt a present and I'm moving very soon. I'm selling the house this week actually so I didn't have very much time so I talked myself out of doing something super ambitious and talked myself into doing something more simple but I absolutely love how this turned out. So I'm going to show you how to make these little quilted coasters. I made a set of four. This is a simple log cabin block bound quilt style. And I think it's really cute, so I thought I'd make a video to show you all. Um, does anyone else when you're recording yourself have trouble looking at the camera and not yourself? Maybe it's just me, I don't know. Anyway, so some of the tools you're gonna need, I will definitely put links to down in the notes below. I use things like a rotary cutter and a mat. I use um, some quilt, quilt clips if you need them but everything else I'll just link you to in the notes. So enjoy if you do make it, I would love to see it. Um, I have lots of other tutorials and videos on my blog, pincutsostudio.com. My husband just arrived home, <laughs> but I'm not gonna refilm this. You get the picture, let's get on to the tutorial. <laughs> okay, the materials you're going to need are some kind of novelty print. You can see my little owls. Um, this is the one my, my daughter wants some coasters out of. They have little, it has little London scenes, but the scenes need to be about three, less than three inches because that's how big our center square is going to be. And then I also pulled some fabrics that go with this so that each coaster can be a little bit different, but they'll all go with each other, mixed and matched borders and bindings and backs and stuff. So, oh, also you need a scrap of batting. Um, this is just warm and natural cotton batting, but any batting will do. You can use cheap stuff or something like this. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, I have cut a little three inch square out of an index card. I'm gonna center it over, I'm gonna use this guy, this owl. You can hold it up to the light to make sure that you're centered and straight. Um, you don't want your owl or whatever it is you're using to be too close to the edges because you need some seam allowance. So then I'm just gonna take my pencil trace around it and then carefully cut it out. All right, so what we're going to do is make a basic log cabin block, that's what this is called. So. Um, since this is three inches plus, I mean minus seam allowances, then I'm going to cut my strips, my border strips, one inch wide. So I'm going to grab my ruler, place the one inch, I already straightened this edge, place the one inch mark on my straight edge, and cut. I'm going to cut two just to make sure I have enough. Okay. If you don't know how to use a rotary cutter and mat to cut like I just did, I actually have a video on that. So you can go check that out, how to use a rotary cutter and mat. Okay. So now a log cabin goes together like this. First you put strips on the sides and iron it and then you put strips on the bottom. So I'm just gonna cut these. You want it larger than your block so you can trim it nice and straight later. So using a quarter inch seam, I'm gonna go sew these strips onto the sides of my owl. Okay, so this is what it should look like. I'm gonna go press these flat with my seams toward the center. All right, now we can go ahead and trim these off. I'm gonna line my roller up with the bottom edge and I'm also gonna make sure that this edge is on one line too. So I make sure my block ends up pretty straight. Okay, now I'm going to take this strip, cut this one in half, and I'm going to do the same thing on the top and bottom. Okay, let me trim these off. Okay. 
and we should be left with a four inch square. There's no scientific reason why a coaster needs to be four inches, but I thought this looked about right. <laughs> so that's how big I did it. If you have a bigger or smaller um, fabric that you need to fussy cut, a smaller print or a bigger one, you can just redo the math. Um, nobody ever made laws about how big coasters should be, right? But I feel like at least four inches is probably a good idea. Okay, next you need, this is your little log cabin block. Next we need a piece of batting. I'm going to trim this so it's barely bigger. And then we need a backing fabric. So I'm going to do the same. I might just keep the backing and borders all the same. So I'm going to use this fabric for my backing and I'm just going to oops, cut this slightly bigger than my batting piece. Okay, so this is a very tiny quilt. <laughs> There's not much space in here for quilting, but I'm going to quilt by, let me stick a pin in the center. I'm going to stitch in the ditch all the way around in my seam here, around this square. That just means barely right next to this seam. Turn corners and stitch all the way around him. Okay, so I have stitched my owl down around the outsides and I also ran a row of basting stitches all the way around the edge, just an eighth of an inch inside my outside edge. Now I'm going to trim it. So I'm lining my lines up with my owl, not with the edges of my, my block because you can see how it gets kind of bent out of shape when you stitch it. That's why we trim last. So I'm lining up here and this edge is straight too. So that one's another reference point. left is to add the border. So usually when I quilt, you if you've been following me for a while, you've heard me say this, but I always hand stitch the back of my binding, but my mom just taught me how to do it by machine. And it's a little counterintuitive, but for little projects like this where I do not want to hand stitch, it worked like a charm. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. First, you're going to cut some binding strips. I cut mine two and a quarter inches. So I've already straightened this edge. So here's my two and a quarter. Lost my cutter. <laughs> okay, this is plenty long enough to go all the way around. So I'm going to iron this, but when. All right, here's my two and a half inch binding strip, my two and a quarter inch, sorry. Um, I ironed the whole thing in half lengthwise, but on this end, you want to start by folding it down at 45 degree angle and then folding it down in half like this. So this end should look like this. So ordinarily when you bind a big quilt and you're gonna hand stitch the back, you start the binding on the front. But for this method where we're gonna finish it by machine, we're gonna do it on the back. So figure out where the bottom of your design is because that just helps it look nicer when the seam is at the bottom. And you're gonna flip it over. I'm gonna start on the back. This is so tiny, so it'll be, um, we have just enough space, but we need to leave a little bit loose here because when we come back around, we're gonna tuck the other end into this. So I'm gonna start sewing right here, but when you bind a quilt, you don't just sew around because what do you do with these corners? So I'm gonna sew this little piece and I'm going to stop sewing stick a pin right here a quarter inch from this edge and I'm gonna back stitch there and then I'll show you what to do next okay so now we have this I started here leaving this flap and then I sewed and back stitched at a quarter inch from the next edge so next what you're gonna do for this mitered corner is fold this up 45 degree angle right on your corner like so 
and then fold it back down on itself so that this fold is flush with the top edge. Then I'm gonna start sewing right on this edge and go to the next corner and do the stop there and do the same thing. I always like to put a pin in because it's really kind of hard to see once you're sewing. So I'm gonna sew from here to my pin and then I'm gonna do the next corner and the next one. Okay, I sewed all of my corners, but then I stopped so I could show you this last part. So, um, I'm going to trim about right here is where I need it to end. You don't want to trim it right at the edge because it needs to be able to tuck in. So I'm going to trim the rest of my binding off. I'm going to tuck it inside of this piece of binding. And I'm going to continue sewing um, all the way until my stitches began over here. This is okay because that's going to be turned over and it's not going to show. It just makes it's important that this end is covered. So I'm going to finish this seam right here. Okay, so there it is. All my corners are done. So this is the last step. We're going to turn it to this side on the front and that's how we're going to top stitch it. So I like to pin it. And this is how you miter those corners. You take it all the way up and then you go all the way back down and you make sure your corner looks nice and neat like so. Stick a pin in it. And you do the next one. You go up, down. These corners should meet in the center here. Stick a pin in it. Go to the next one. Okay, so when I sew around this, I go slowly and carefully right on the edge so it looks really neat. Sew straight to the corner and then turn it exactly the right spot for it to look nice and neat. It'll take some practice, but it sure is faster than the hand sewing I usually do. I have to take that one out. It also helps in the corners to use a spare pin and sort of use your pin to hold your corner there as you sew over it so your presser foot doesn't jam it out of proportion or out of out of place. Okay, I'm gonna go top stitch and then I'll be done. Okay, here's my second finished coaster. I ran out of bobbin right here. <laughs> My machine tells me when I'm about to run out and I still let it go all the way out. So now I have two. I'm going to go ahead and make two more so I'll be able to gift her a set of four. So if you make some of these, I would love to see if you tag me on Instagram or email me or find me on my blog and leave a comment. So I love to see what you guys make with my tutorials. Cheers!